In a previous project video of mine, I showed you how to create a crude cocktail machine. The most important components of the system were three peristaltic pumps. Those are basically motors to which a mechanical structure is attached, which compresses a silicon tube while the motor shaft is rotating. This way a pressure difference is created, which can force liquid through the pump without it touching any mechanical parts. That makes such a pump suitable for clean, slash sterile or aggressive fluids. And best of all, it delivers a precise amount of fluids per minute. In my case around 525 milliliters per minute. Now while all of that sounds fantastic, the price of those particular pumps is certainly not, with around $30 per piece. There do exist cheaper versions though, but their flow rate is also around 5 times smaller. So in this episode of DIY or buy, we will try to create our own peristaltic pump, which for one should be cheaper than $30 and should also offer a flow rate higher than 100 milliliters per minute. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Upload your Gerber files to order high quality PCBs for insanely low prices. And turn your designs into real boards to make your projects look more professional. As stated as before, a peristaltic pump consists of two main ingredients. A motor and a mechanical construction. Which brings us to the first big problem. If you are familiar with motors, then you might know that they are not that simple to create on your own. Which means this will be a component we have to buy. So the next question is, which one should we buy? I went with the NEMA 17 stepper motor, because it has a standardized faceplate with known dimensions, they are very easy to get a hold on and most importantly they are relatively cheap, around $10 per piece. The only problem with such stepper motors is that in comparison to DC motors, which like the name implies only require a DC voltage to work, they require a specific sequence of applied voltages to their four wires. So make sure to watch my basics video about the subject if you are confused right now. As for the complementary electronic components for the motor, I went with a DRV8825 stepper motor controller IC and an Arduino Nano microcontroller with a potentiometer as an input to later control the RPM of the stepper motor. According to this schematic, I then connected the two breakout boards to one another, soldered the motor wires directly to the stepper motor driver and finally added a 100 microfarad capacitor to the power input of the driver. For the Arduino codes, I simply created a loop that samples the potentiometer voltage and transforms it into a value for the timer 1 of the microcontroller, which according to how I set it up in the setup section of the codes, then creates a PWM voltage on pin 9 with a duty cycle of 50% and a variable frequency. Each time this signal completes one period, the motor performs one step, which subsequently means that with a higher frequency we get a higher RPM and with a lower frequency we get a lower RPM. Last but not least, I configured the three mode inputs of the stepper motor driver so that the 116 step mode is activated. And with the code being completed, I uploaded it to the Arduino, connected a 12V power source to the motor driver and checked whether everything worked correctly, which it did. The cost of the Arduino and stepper motor driver does also not add to the overall cost of our DIY peristaltic pump since the $30 buy version also required electronic components which cost around the same. And with the conclusion of the motor part, we get to the more complicated components, the mechanical construction. If we observe the buy option a bit closer, we can see that it consists of a rotor that is made of two plastic plates between which three plastic rollers are positioned. Additionally, we got a plastic outer shell which keeps the silicon tube close to the rollers. With those guidelines in mind, I tried creating rough sketches for my own version of the mechanical construction, with one big difference. Instead of plastic rollers, I wanted to use metal ball bearings. 
But after around 2 hours of doodling, I realized that mechanical components are quite hard to create. Thankfully though, I found a suitable model of a peristaltic pump on Thingiverse, which was originally created by Rolf. Its model was pretty much what I was looking for. The only problem though, was that it was not created for the NEMA 17 stepper motor. So I downloaded his model files, imported them into Fusion 360, closed the mounting holes for the smaller stepper motor and created new ones with indentations for the NEMA 17. Sadly though, I could not create all four of them, since that would have messed up Ralph's model. But I think two mounting holes will also be sufficient. Once the three parts for the enclosure were then successfully modified, I loaded a roll of black ABS filament into the 3D printer and sliced the models with an infill of 60%. This will later give the parts more mechanical stability. After the three parts were then printed, which roughly took around 5 hours, I tried assembling the enclosure, which already held its form even without any bolts. So I continued by modifying the two rotor plates of the system, which was the hardest part since it had to snugly fit on the shaft of the stepper motor. But after four iterations, I finally got a pair which fitted perfectly and held its position very firmly. That means it was time to assemble the rotor by utilizing three M4 bolts and nuts and six 13 by four by five bolt bearings. But make sure to not tighten the bolts too much, otherwise the ball bearings cannot spin freely. Next, I added four M4 nuts to the bottom side of the enclosure, secured the stepper motor to it with two M3 bolts and slid the rotor onto the motor shaft. At this point, it was time for the silicone tube, for which Ralph recommends one with dimensions of 6 by 4 mm. So I went with those by placing a long piece of it inside the enclosure next to the rollers. And after adding the two missing pieces of the enclosure and closing it all up with four M4 bolts, it was finally time for a first test. As you can see, the rotor moves without a problem and the pump can also transport liquid. But I should mention that I had to shorten the bolts of the rotor in order to achieve that. And by turning up the RPM of the motor to its maximum right before it gets stuck and measuring the amount of pump milliliters per minute, we get a flow rate of approximately 200 milliliters per minute. Combine that with the fact that our DIY version is mechanically pretty stable, offers the advantages of a stepper motor and overall costs only half in comparison to the buy option, I would say that DIY is this time the winner. But what do you think and what should be the subject for the next DIY or buy episode? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, stay creative and I will see you next time.